That's some pretty good bearings. Before we get started, I got a sticker shout out. It's for Nerds and Makers. They sent me a pretty sweet pack of swag here. Uh, they sent me a couple of stickers, a refrigerator magnet, this notebook, and best of all, this new challenge coin, and I like that. Well, friends, for better or worse, this thing here is my bench grinder. It needs some work. One thing is it fell over and this cast iron shroud broke into three pieces. This one that it came with was missing a piece already and I didn't get that so I think we'll just toss that all together. I think the way we're going to approach this is uh, we'll fix this first and then on this side we'll build a belt grinder. The repair job's pretty straightforward. We'll just clean this up and braise it back together and we'll just make a brand new outer cover. Well, first things first, we'll wire wheel the rust off the part that's going to be brazed. And while we're at it, we might as well just wire wheel the whole thing since it's going to get a new paint job at the end of this anyway. Then it's on to the brazing, which I actually find rather boring. Okay, well that should hold together pretty well. Now this just happens to be the mirror image of what we need. So we'll trace this out on this piece of sheet metal roll it in the English wheel and see what we can come out with. Okay, so there's my dome. Now I'm going to see what I can do to flatten out the rest of this, and then we'll uh, cut it out. Okay, that's, that's looking pretty good. Uh, now we'll cut this out and drill the holes. Okay, here it is reassembled with a nice, clean, fresh paint job on it. Now a grinder usually has a tool rest up here and I got a feeling that that tool rest slips into that so I'm going to have to fashion that. I got no idea what it looked like. I've done some research and I can't see any grinder like this one on the web. Now looking into that hole you can see that there are threads tapped in there. That is for a set screw to hold something in place and that something is going to be this. We'll just tap threads into that and bolt our tool rest onto it. Here's a piece that was left over from the steel storage cart project, and I'll leave a link up in the corner to that. I just bent it to 90 degrees, cut a little gusset, drilled a hole in it. Then uh, this is a piece of 3 quarter inch steel bar. I uh, tapped that to 3 8 to accept the bolt, and we'll just slip that into that hole and put the set screw in there to hold it in place. That should do. Okay, so progress is pretty good. My tool rest, that's nice and solid. Let's get on to the belt grinder attachment. So this is gonna be my drive wheel, and uh, I've made a bushing here that will go inside this. We'll have to force it in. This was the grinder wheel clamp, and I cut the big washer part of it off and turned that down so it can be pressed into into this end. And yes, I did do all this on the lathe, and I'm not going to tell you how I did it. Instead, I'm going to send you to a video I did on how you can do it with a hand drill and a file. We have our key drive hub, our bushing for the gear, and then I made another bushing to go inside this to make sure that this thing is centered on the spindle. So this thing here is called a temp stick, and uh, what it does is whenever it touches something that's 500 degrees, it melts. I know from previous experience that this tubing will gain a couple of thousands at 500 degrees, so we're going to heat it up and then use the vise to interference fit that other bushing into it. Now we'll just press that together, and that should hold it just fine. Okay, that's looking good. Okay, let's see how that spins. One thing we know is this needs to be crowned, otherwise the belt will roll off it. 
and uh, I'll probably just do that by hand with a file. And the file didn't really work all that well, so I ended up switching to an angle grinder. That worked much better. And if you want to understand more about how a crown wheel works, I'll leave a link to Matthias Wandel's very informative video on the subject. And were it not for that video, I would never even have attempted this project. Now that we got the drive wheels sorted out, I think we'll work on the tensioner wheel. And I think we'll just use these two pieces of square tubing. I've got this steel sheet metal I can use as a spacer. But the real question is how to attach it to the grinder. The way I want to attach it is to clamp it around this collar right here. All I gotta do is find the right size pipe. Take this piece of pipe, split it, and open it out. And hopefully I can get it to get large enough to go around this. Now here's a tip I just learned about on the Reclaimed Audio podcast. If you need a nice clean line around a piece of pipe, just put a hose clamp on it and scribe around the edge. The chain vice grip really works well to form my oblong pipe segment into a perfect circle around that collar. That should work. Just weld that angle iron on. We'll drill and tap it first. But having this alone hold the idler wheel tensioner in place seems like a lot to ask. Luckily, on this side of the grinder, there's also this 7 16 tapped hole. So we'll put this on there, and we'll come down and attach to that through some way, I'm not sure yet, and we'll build something that will hold our telescopic tensioner. Well, I don't have my idler wheel yet, but I know it's the same diameter as this washer. So... We're going to use that as our mock-up. I'm going with 2x36 belts on this thing because that really doesn't have a lot of power. I know a 72-inch belt is more desirable, but it needs more space and more power. You know I should probably get in there with a transfer punch and mark that center line. Now the reason I did that is because I measured this and that is exactly 5 inches below that. That's how I'm going to locate that hole. Okay, that is looking pretty good. I think I'll just weld about half of that around there, and then we'll put those on there to clamp it tight. Now this backing plate is going to hold the idler wheel. And the reason I made this big backing plate to do that is because the idler wheel has to sit on its own out in the middle of space, and it has to be adjustable side to side to be able to adjust the belt tracking. I've got this galvanized steel spacer here I'm going to weld on. And yes, I know, burning zinc is poisonous. But here's a pro tip. All welding fumes are poisonous. Don't breathe any of them. Okay, so I've got my backing plate. It's fitted onto the grinder. So I want to use this 5 8 bar as a pivot. Then I want to mount this square tube on it so it can be adjusted to align the idler pulley. So here I've drilled and tapped my little anchor blocks. Okay, so there's my little pivot point. Now we'll weld that onto it and build our telescopic mechanism inside this. Okay, now we need the interface to the 5 8 steel bar and I think the way we'll do that is we'll just draw that curve on here and then uh, we'll come in and cut some pie slices. So we'll just cut that pattern out and we should be able to fold the ends in up to the steel bar. All right, so I've ground the edges of a washer and stuffed it down in there, aligned it with the other tube that slides inside. We'll tack that into place, then we'll fold these ends in and weld the rod on the end. Okay, that's looking good. I got, I got my range of motion. So one thing we want to do is we want to have a way to tension the belt, because I don't want to just leave it to chance. And the way I'm going to do that, pass that cap screw through there. So we'll weld that locating washer on this side, so that is captive in there. Then we'll weld all that on the end of the tube. This nut will be captive inside the tube and as you loosen this it will apply more tension. As you tighten it it will reduce the tension. So the way this is going to work is I'm going to weld this stud onto the edge of this tube here. We'll sandwich a spring in between there. Then this knob will be the adjuster for the idler angle. And I have a little jib I made to put in there and I'm not sure if I should weld that in or not. All right, well, here's my captive Allen screw, and here's my spring perch. Let's see if I can get those two mated together inside there. Well, that may be kind of crude, but that will give me the adjustment on my spring that I want. 
All right, so here's my alignment. I really don't need much. And then here's my spring preload, and that is with maximum preload there. As I turn this screw, it uh, retracts the spring, reducing the amount of preload on it, as you can see. The fact of the matter is I'm going to have to shorten this, but I'm not going to be able to do that until I've received the actual idler pulley, which is still not here. Anyway, I'm going to need something to mount the idler pulley onto, and this quarter inch by three inch angle iron is going to be it. Now I want to have some clearance here. On the downside, I am going to have to remove the wheel to adjust the belt tension, but uh, life could be worse. It does not take the most perfect vision to see that that hole did not tap straight. I'm going to have to do that again. Now this time I'm checking to make sure that my tap is perpendicular to the work surface in two different directions because I need that bolt to go straight in. And yes, I am using a reamer as a dead center. On the bright side, it's not hurting my tap handle at all, and I can sharpen the reamer. One thing you'll notice is when I was riding in the center hole, I was going against the non-cutting direction on the reamer. So it might have dulled it a little bit, but uh, at least I got my tap in straight. And that is much better. Alright, so there's my idler. That should do. Now what we need to do is figure out where to bore the hole for this to come through. So the way we'll do this, we'll measure. Now one thing I want to do before we get this alignment is I want to make sure that this is parallel to this. And it is. The edge of that belt is 5 16 from the backing plate, so we'll put the edge of this 5 16 from the backing plate. And even though this side to side alignment is adjustable, you want to start out as close as you can. Now we've got our side to side center line. The top to bottom center line just needs to be in the middle. That's looking pretty good. I think we need a little more curvature on the drive wheel though, because it's riding off one side or the other. But yeah, that's good progress. One thing I'm not digging is this texture that was left by the sander when I, when I put the crown on here. And I think if I use this block of wood, I can buff it back to smooth. So we'll try that. That's a little bit of an improvement. It's just friction, heating that up, smearing the plastic. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of liking it. Here I'm setting the rotational alignment of the idler wheel to get the belt to track perfectly straight. Next I'll tack the idler wheel mount onto the spring-loaded belt tensioner. Well that's looking good. Well I accidentally welded my jib. I guess that's permanent now. This could be really dangerous. That was not the smashing success I was hoping it was going to be. Okay, it's jumping around a lot, and I think it's partly because the belt tension is too loose. Luckily, I built in a way to tighten it. Someone in the Home Built Belt Grinder group on Facebook said uh, use electrical tape. Just build up in the middle and that'll give you a really good crown. That, that might help. So let's, let's go with that. Well, the additional preload seems to be helping, but I don't think this tape is doing much. So we'll take that back off. All right, so I'm really not happy with the balance or the finish on this wheel. So I'm going to do a little experiment here. We'll apply some paste wax to the wood. Maybe that lubrication will smooth this out. Or it might start the wood on fire. That did help to smear the plastic a little bit. So one of the things I did there was I, I applied some additional crowning on this side to try to influence it to ride back up to the top. 
Now the additional spring tension seemed to have improved it, so one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the spring to one with the more tension. And because of that, I'll go ahead and back off the amount of preload. Now I'm pretty happy with that. I put a little bit stronger spring in there, backed off the preload. That thing's working. I couldn't be happier. It needs a couple of things. I need to take it back apart and paint it. I need to put rubber feet on it because this pedestal tends to walk around a little. All it has for feet right now are one inch bolts. If you want to see the result of that endeavor, find me on Instagram. My name there is wildman.tech. Anyway, that's all for this time. I'm happy to answer any questions in the doobly-doo below, so please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Click up here to see my last video. Click over here to see something of mine that YouTube thinks you'll like. Don't forget to go get the Fauci ouchie. Let's all get vaccinated so we can get back to normal. And have a good one.